My dearly beloved in Christ, since the time of our first parents, Adam and Eve, people have been pursuing happiness upon earth. However, since we were created for an everlasting destiny, earthly happiness cannot satisfy the human heart and soul. At best, it's imperfect and incomplete. Happiness on earth is only momentary and transitory. To find the ever enduring happiness we seek, we've got to leave the narrow confines of this life and enter into the endless bliss of heaven. A virtuous life of union with God always leads to the second best sort of happiness. Yet this joy and peace is attained through self-sacrifice rather than through selfishness. This joy is beautifully expressed in the peace prayer of St. Francis. Let me seek not so much to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. Father Victor Dux declares that this is a secret of happiness. Here is mature love at its best. That is what produces the best kind of happiness we can attain. It's evident that many never reach the mature expression of either marital or fraternal love. Hampered by neuroses of all kinds, many are kept from entering into fruitful relationship with others. And this makes for unhappiness because we're, by nature, social beings. A love which is immature is recognized by its overbearing demands, its tendency to magnify slights and injuries, its constant need to be reassured that love is returned, its entire dependence on repeated and prolific expressions of love on the part of others. This is not something immoral, but it's immature. The child has this kind of love, normally at least for the early stages of life. Parents are loved not in themselves, but because of the functions they perform in giving a sense of well-being, solace, and security to the child. The child rests happily in this condition of his love because he's immature. But adult love should give evidence of considerable enrichment. The grown person must be able, for the love of God, to love another in himself and for his intrinsic worth and not for what he can provide in the way of security or other advantage. That is what St. Francis was talking about in his prayer. Almighty God intends that our pursuit for happiness on earth lead the soul toward heavenly joy, the ultimate, complete, and unending possession of God who is the source of all happiness. Pursuit should lead to our ultimate goal, much in the same way as a hunter pursues game, insofar as he hopes to capture the prey. It all makes for a happy hunt. The devil has been very successful in deluding people to seek their ultimate fulfillment in this short life alone through excessive selfishness and indulgence in sinful pleasures. Countless souls wander about through life with no vision beyond this present existence and no hope for a happiness that's more enduring. Such a self-centered, soft, materialistic life is detrimental to spiritual growth and the attainment of ultimate happiness. Therefore, we must carefully choose the kind of happiness we will pursue. Despite our best efforts, we cannot find lasting tranquility on earth, for we cannot be sheltered from all dangers and reverses in fortune. Worldly happiness that promises independence is actually dependent upon a sizable bank account and or on securities which often have proven to be very insecure. We cannot be assured of a long life even when we adopt a healthy diet and lifestyle. And of course, no one can escape death. And in God's will is our peace. God's moral laws, the Ten Commandments and the natural law, are rules for human happiness. They serve as a moral compass and reveal God's will for us. Experience proves that happiness in our daily life is found 
in obedience to God's laws and conformity to his will. Worry is the fly in the ointment of happiness. It's the interests we have to pay on trouble even before it comes to us. If we seek the fulfillment of God's will in our life, we will not be pestered by excessive worries. We will not be picking our way gingerly through the heavy underbrush of life, but rather confidently travel upon the highway of God's law and love. In his will is our peace. To be at peace is to be happy. Where can we find true happiness? We will experience true peace and happiness in our lives when we learn to conform our will to the holy will of God. And then I'll just close with a story. In a monastery of Spain, there lived in the 14th century a monk whose prayers wrought miraculous cures. People were amazed, and all the more so because there was no extraordinary signs of sanctity about the man. His superior took him aside one day and wished to know how it was that our Lord wrought such prodigious cures by his intermediation. I'm surprised myself, answered the good monk, that God deigns to make use of a miserable sinner like me to relieve and cure the sick. I do not owe that favor to any particular virtue. Hitherto, I've merely done all I could to conform in all things to the will of God. When I'm sick, I say to the Lord, my God, thy will be done. If I'm obliged by order of my superiors to go to another house, I likewise see in that order the will of God, and I say again, thy will be done. But brother, asked the abbot, how did you do the other day when some malicious person set fire to our court and caused us so much damage. Father, said the religious, I contented myself by saying the Our Father, lo to myself, dwelling particularly on the petition, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Here the abbot recognized very clearly that it was in his entire submission to the will of God that had made this good and simple religious one of the closest friends of God and had consequently won for him the gift of miracles. Let us do the same thing, and if God does not grant us the same gift, he will at least bestow upon us other graces no less precious. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.